All right, so uh, let me uh, dive right in. I uh, have been working on this project that I'm really passionate about that I, uh, I'm going to share with you guys today. Um, real quick uh, about myself, um, let you guys know where I'm coming from. Uh, my name is Jeff Pelton. This is my dot com. Uh, I'm an inventor and a, at heart and an aspiring entrepreneur. Uh, I've done full stack development, uh, engineering, and product. So my heart really lies with the product, but I've done a whole lot of full stack engineering, uh, building full sites for people, um, you know, e-commerce and what have you. Um, so you know, I'm really excited about the future of HTML5 uh, web apps and you know all the cool things we can do with them and the types of apps that uh, you can build. So. I'm going to dive right in and show you guys uh, the project I've been working on here. Uh, Jukebox.js uh, is an open source app that I wanted to build to listen to music. So let me tab over and see if uh, this demo is working. Uh, I want to show you guys real quick uh, what it looks like so you guys kind of have a frame of reference while we go through some of these slides. Let me see if I got audio too. There we go. So basically, uh, the idea of what I wanted to build was a uh, a music player in the web that I could invite my friends to. And so we have things like uh, chat um, and a music library so you can upload. So uh, there's some really basic features, but when you add it all up, the experience is kind of amazing. Uh, and introducing real-time features and visualizations and things like ratings uh, are all really great. Um, so you know, actually, if uh, any of you out there are on the Wi-Fi or have uh, your iPhones even, uh, this will work. You can try going to the URL, which is jukeboxjs.com, uh, and hop in the chat room and give it a shot. Uh, we'll see if it holds up to uh, you know, whoever shows up on it. But um, I'll come back to that later. Uh, so to jump back to the slides, I'll show you real quick how, uh, how I've got this organized. So there's a lot we can go over. Hopefully some of these things look interesting. Uh, we're going to start with a high level, how you address a complex application like this, how you might structure it and think about building it, and then some of the nitty gritty details of a few of the uh, HTML and JavaScript components that I found uh, pretty neat and interesting and uh, cutting edge, actually. So let's go right into it. Uh, how you would look at a com building a complex application like this. So the requirements that I put forward were to make it an HTML5 web app, uh, audio playback without Flash, so we kind of want some cross-browser, modern web browser targeted. Uh, chat rooms via sockets, so there's going to be a lot of real-time uh, features. User authentication and uh, uh, some other basic things like the media server, library um, data when you upload your songs, and the, the playlist data. So there's some database uh, that's required as well. Um, so the strategy here was clearly lots of open source. Um, pretty much everything here has a .js next to it except for MongoDB, and it's pretty friendly to JavaScript. Um, Node.js, you know, if you haven't used it yet, you should give it a shot. Um, Socket.io is what I'm using for the real time. Uh, jQuery we all love. And the front end technologies I picked were uh, underscore backbone. Um, and a couple others that are really neat for the audio. Uh, Aurora.js, uh, Dancer.js got really popular for doing visualizations with audio. Uh, it's pretty cool. Uh, I actually had to patch it a little bit to make it work with Aurora, but it's uh, looking pretty good from the community standpoint. And the visualization I actually drew with D3, just using one of their basic samples. So that's kind of fun to look at. Um, so House.js, let me cover a little bit more in depth. I'll kind of go through it more as I go, but House.js is actually something that I put together. Um, let me flip over to that GitHub page. Uh, scroll to the bottom. You can see some of kind of what it does. Uh, basically, after building more than one web application, you kind of feel like you're redoing a lot of the same stuff. So uh, I started prototyping this quite a while ago, but I'm trying to push out an open source version that basically is doing all of the dirty work that I don't want to do on the server anymore. Uh, I really like building front end applications and experiences on the web and you know, doing things like request filters and form parsing, logging, all that kind of stuff's not very fun. Um, so let me, uh, <laughs> let me use my uh, turn off pop up button here. <laughs> so uh, it works, right? Um, so 
Yeah, so uh, house.js is a, a server app running on Node that provides a lot of the base systems that you're going to want, like your file system access, uh, a RESTful server to Mongo, um, you know, endpoints, RESTful endpoints for all that stuff, and um, things like sessions, user handling, file uploads. Um, so this is kind of my best attempt at kind of open sourcing all of that together um, in one package uh, that I'll, I'll talk about that a little bit more, how I'm using it. Um, so real quick, before we build our HTML5 app, just a few of the things to think about. Um, not all of these really affect me um, in this project, but you, know, you want to think about your browser compatibility, what, you know, what you're targeting. Um, if you need URLs and SEO, uh, it's kind of different than what a lot of applications require, so it's kind of uh, you know, different to handle. Uh, you can get yourself an app stores, which might be an advantage, and then you got to look at uh, different devices and uh, connections that might be using your app. Uh, some of the great resources I've found when doing this development are these uh, couple of sites here. HTML5rocks.com is an excellent resource for uh, bleeding edge features in the browser. They have a lot of tutorials and articles here and just really good resources for uh, all the different stuff that is coming out for the browser that you can take advantage of. So I end up coming there a lot as well as this other great site that's quick and easy for uh, checking out what standards are available in each browser. So caniuse.com uh, basically just has a big chart of all this stuff. So one of the ones I'm using here is the audio API. You can come in and take a look at what browsers are supporting it. So uh, right now you see IO6 is in kind of gray down here, but uh, it's probably going to work. So this whole app is targeting Chrome primarily on the desktop, but it's also going to work in Safari natively, uh, like you know, in mobile Safari. Um, uh, which is awesome. So you really don't have to do a whole lot to change what you're doing in development to make this type of application work on the desktop and mobile. Uh, so I'll get into that more too. Oh, and of course, if you haven't seen it already, the To Do MVC is another great resource. Uh, I'm using Backbone and Require, uh, but you know, I think uh, like we saw in the talk previously, there's a lot of other great options. Uh, you should really explore using whatever you think is best. And so for the time being, I've been giving Backbone a shot. Uh, and I think this is a pretty good reference application that I'm building with uh, Jukebox, with some chat features and other things that, um, you know, it would be great to see more, uh, like a to-do MVC for chat uh, would be cool, I think. But uh, anyways, those are some nice resources to have. Uh, so real quick, a little look at the system architecture that I came up with. Um, the server side's running on house.js, so that kind of provides all of my server calls. Uh, everything's restful for the most part, except for the sockets and uh, serving static files. Um, but it provides my users, my authentication, sessions, uh, me multimedia uploads and downloads, so you can like stream them out of the server, which is really nice. Uh, for that, I actually use MongoDB and GridFS. Uh, I haven't seen a whole lot of people using GridFS yet, but I think it's kind of fun because uh, Mongo is so nice and replicates well and everything. So I've been trying that out too. Um, and then chat room sockets, of course, uh, on the server. So uh, the client approach is Backbone. Uh, we kind of talked, we heard about this in the previous talk, but lots and lots of views and embedded views. So this isn't real pretty, but uh, kind of gives you a quick overview of how the application is structured. Uh, you have you know, your app view at the top, and then you have a, a nav view. And uh, let me tab back to the application real quick and just kind of point out a few of them. So uh, at the top here, I have like a nav view. Obviously, the whole thing's wrapped in a, the app, um, just one app on this page. Uh, and then we have individual views for chat, uh, the history slash queue. Um, the library is the library of songs and uh, then the now playing song. Uh, and so if we look at the chat, let me uh, see over here, the chat view, it's got quite a few different sub views. Um, and again, this is all experimental, so you know, it's not perfect and the UI leaves a lot to, um, you know, a lot more that you'd want to do with it. But you can see that uh, I have a, a list of the rooms. Right now it just joins you into the lobby when you join. Uh, but if you click on the Rooms button, you can get a list of rooms. You can create a new room. And so even things like just that little form to create a new room is its own view um, in, embedded in the other views. So uh, it works out OK. Um, I haven't run into too many troubles with the zombies and stuff yet. But 
uh, you know, I haven't had a whole ton of people using it either, right? Uh, it was kind of small user base right now. So that's kind of the architecture of the server side and client side. Um, the server side is, you know, I try to spend as little time as possible on there. Um, I built the endpoints to be uh, restful and backbone friendly. So, you know, backbone has a sync method, which you can choose to use or not to use. You can parse, um, you can, you know, parse your data to fit into backbone, but since I was kind of starting out with it, I decided to just go ahead and full on try to adopt uh, their methodology. So let me click into one or two of these. Um, basically for each of these endpoints, um, we're gonna have a, a request handler that handles uh, get, get requests, uh, post puts and deletes, uh, pretty simple stuff, uh, but organized in a way to try to make it a little bit more manageable than typical. Um, not a whole lot different going on with each of these. The multimedia, the media files is a little different. It accepts uploads and might like extract metadata from the file and save that as well. Um, do some special stuff, but most of these are pretty straightforward uh, REST interface to MongoDB. Um, the chat, hand, uh, chat room on the other hand also has some socket stuff um, and I'll show an example of that later actually. Um, the only other thing that the server does is serves static files. So your backbone app is like, you know, HTML, CSS, JS, uh, and it, it'll just host that out of a folder for you. So before we get into the massive backbone app, uh, just real quick, my approach to structuring it is with require.js. And uh, I, th I think I'm using their AMD pattern. Um, when you look at the require.js site, it's massive, like really a lot of documentation and stuff about requiring JavaScript files. Um, it, it seems like they've done a lot of work on it, so I'm trying to kind of lean on them and take advantage of that. Um, what the AMD pattern does is help you modularize your code and kind of keep it within a scope. Uh, so let me show you my example of some of that. Um, here, here's like my bootstrap. Uh, index.html file, um, short of you know putting stuff in the header, you basically can have a, a, a div where you want your app to load in. Uh, you bootstrap require.js, and then from there you're kind of doing uh, require calls to load the files you want, and then just executing code um, in here in the body. And you can see this require call returns a, an object. And so that's kind of an example of using the AMD to scope and modularize your code. Uh, so the index.js file, for instance, would look like this, uh, where we have an anonymous function, we create an object, add some stuff to the object, do a whole bunch of more requires, and uh, at the bottom we um, define it as a module, uh, if, if we have require loaded, so uh, is optional. Real quick about Backbone, if you're not familiar, um, the com main components of it are the views, models, collections. Those all have relationships together. It's pretty simple. Um, you can kind of use it to your benefit or harm, depending on how you want to make use of it. But uh, you know, it, it kind of lets you, it, it adds a little bit of organization to your code and structure and handle some of the things that uh, you wouldn't want to handle all the time, like the event, um, event handlers for views. and a few things like that. Again, may not be the, uh, the best choice of a client framework right now, but uh, there's so many out there. Um, just kind of went with one and have been testing it out. Um, this seems to work pretty good uh, so far. Uh, again, I haven't exposed the application to production, so to speak, or really hammered it yet, but uh, with a lot of edge cases or other browsers and things. But uh, for, for what I'm doing, it seems to be working okay. See, this example's not too interesting. So let me dive right into the uh, different components of the front end that are more interesting. Um, the chat and socket server, I know like at the last JSLA, we were talking a little bit about backbone and chat servers, um, which is why I was kind of, like I mentioned, I'm, uh, I try to encourage people to maybe have a reference chat app. You know, open source is always great to look at. Um, I, again, my background isn't really as a hardcore engineer. Um, but more of a product guy, so I don't want to be totally judged on my code, but hope that you guys might take a look at it and 
you know, through the open source uh, community kind of make it better, right? Um, but, you know, my, so my approach is usually just to get it done and see if I can make it work at all before I uh, worry too much about uh, performance and things. But uh, here you can see a simple example of a chat app. Might be interesting for uh, some of you guys if you haven't explored um, using Socket.io yet. This is on the server side. We're just setting up a IO server and how to handle um, connections from clients. And then in the chat room, uh, the different commands they can issue. Here I'm showing uh, the examples of information. So when you first join the room, you get some information about the room, like who's in it. Um, and then uh, on top of the chat, I also attach the, the radio functions for the music player. So things like the skip function are to skip the song in the queue, advance the, the radio basically. Uh, and then here's like the uh, method to join a chat room that basically subscribes you to the socket. Uh, and when we do that, we also tell everyone else in the room about it, uh, which is real easy. I mean, there's not much code here, which is kind of the neat thing about the chat room. Uh, on disconnect, we remove them from the room and we tell everyone that they're no longer in the room. So it's all real time and synced up. Uh, and saving a message, same thing. It's really just one line to push that message to all of the clients in that chat room. Uh, so I think the chat has been actually really fun um, and a great kind of uh, centerpiece for the app. Uh, obviously, I use it for other things uh, like the radio. Uh, on the client side, again, it's just real uh, adaptive to how Backbone works, where you're listening for um, model documents to be added to the collection. So it just fits right in with how Backbone already works, uh, where basically all I have to do is listen to the chat room and. When I get a message, just drop it into the collection and Backbone handles it like it normally would, just rendering the element, adding it to the list. Um, so to go through a couple more of the fun items on the um, player, uh, audio in the browser. Uh, the audio API is kind of fresh, but uh, these guys have built Aurora JS is really neat because uh, unlike the audio element, um, the, well, the audio element, uh, like if you just have like an audio tag in your HTML, is pretty well supported right now, but the problem is it's only supporting the codecs that that browser decides to support. So there's a crazy problem right now in war with uh, what the common format's gonna be, and ultimately it looks like you're gonna have to convert your files to multiple formats if you wanna support all the browsers. Uh, with audio API, uh, anything that supports the audio API will play the file. Um, so uh, Aurora has codecs written in JavaScript for MP3, FLAC, ALAC, and some of the, the Apple formats that I think have been opened up now. Um, so it'll play M4As and stuff, um, plus OGGs. So this is great. Um, if you're looking at doing like game development, I would take a good look at this. Um, again, it's gonna be working natively out of the box on Safari. Um, uh, Safari Mobile, I should say, and it's already working on Safari 6. Um, so this is really cool. Uh, it can play files from a URL uh, and from a file, local file. So let me actually show you that real quick. Um, if I come back to my demo, uh, get to my upload page. Uh, so let's see. Try to show off some of the things you can do here. So uh, if I drag a file in, this is using HTML5 drag and drop, uh, the metadata comes up. Uh, I haven't uploaded the file or anything. This is still just in my browser, and the metadata gets parsed. Uh, I'm using another library on top of Aurora to just beta test it called ib3.js. Uh, it doesn't work 100%, but uh, you can see with Aurora, I can preview the file now locally. Uh, so that's great um, that I can play the file from my local machine without uploading it. Uh, the other thing that's beautiful is it pulls in the album art right off the file, like you know, um, you know, you're used to seeing with all your MP3s. So that's a lot of fun. Um, I think it's great that we can do that in the browser without going to the server. Uh, the next piece I'll show you that's pretty interesting. Uh, yeah, so the metadata, um, real simple event listener gives you that information. You can attach cover art. Um, the next cool thing, <laughs> we'll see how the internet works, but uh, with that same file I just dragged in, I'm gonna upload it now to the server. So what you see here is a um, XHR2 upload. 
So we now actually have like real uploads in the browser using Ajax. Um, XML HTTP request level two. Uh, there's a big, long, scary document, of course, the W3C about it. Um, but the one I used, I'm sure, to get going was this uh, HTML5 rocks. They have great uh, tutorials there. So it's pretty simple. Um, but you can see the example uh, is great because it'll post the files uh, from uh, the browser locally um, as like a blob or a file. Uh, it'll post it, and then the other thing I'm using in that example is a HTML5 progress bar. So I tried out using a different, uh, a few different uh, HTML5 elements that are kind of new, um, and I'll show you those a little bit more detail. But the uh, Ajax upload, I just love. It works smoothly. It does like everything that I mean. The the old way of doing uploads. Um, I mean, if you guys heard Ryan Dahl talk about why he created Node was basically because of how crappy uploads are in the browser. Um, so it's nice to have it like how you want it natively. Uh, so I'd give that a shot too. Um, the sliders, progress bars, drag and drop. These are fun things just to try and experiment with. I don't know that they're uh, anywhere near production ready. Uh, you can see the kind of uh, HTML tags I've been using. So for like the ratings bar, uh, I'll come show you in real life what that looks like. Um, so uh, for the, the, the current position of the song, the time, is using uh, a progress bar. And so I think it's uh, slowly moving along there. And of course, this will look different in every browser, depending on the native look and feel. Uh, right here, I have a, a custom styled slider bar. Uh, this is kind of my rating of, well, it's not really hot or cold right now, but uh, you know, back and forth um, on like 100% scale. And I use this in a couple other places. Um, it's hard to see right here because of the way I have it styled, but I have another slider that controls the uh, intensity of the visualization. Um, I had to kind of scale it back. I actually tried running it on my iPhone. It works. Um, but obviously, the more stuff you're drawing, the slower the page goes, and it actually disrupts the audio playing. Uh, so that's another challenge I have to get through. But um, using those HTML elements is a lot of fun if you can. Uh, honestly, though, the slider doesn't work that great in the iPhone, even though it uh, does display. Uh, you don't really get much out of it. Um, so, I mean, those are things that are great to experiment with, but we're probably not quite where we need to be. Uh, the, the real fun thing in this project, obviously, is the visualization. I'm using dancer.js d3. Um, so dancer got really popular. I think it was on um, Hacker News. He's got like a thousand people looking at the GitHub and kind of patching it and using it for different things. Um, I, uh, like I said, I ended up having to patch it to make it work with Aurora because Dancer kind of is the audio player and everything itself as well. Um, and I've already got an audio player, Aurora, so did a little patch to make that work, um, which is nice. It wasn't too hard. Uh, this is the D3. Uh, I think we've talked about D3 before at uh, JSLA, but. Um, this is just some simple example. Hopefully you guys can see that it's kind of thin. Uh, but the sample code is pretty short. You're just drawing some circles. They have a couple variables like the position, radius, stroke, color, uh, and the duration of the transition. So I put all of those in as variables uh, essentially for the uh, visualization. And you can see the Dancer API um, gives you a few other things, but the two main things you want are the kick and off kick. So it's just emitting these uh, beats, basically. And when the song um, hits a high note or a low note, it'll uh, send those messages off. And so you can you know, input them into your program how you want uh, to, to draw cool things. Uh, and I'll come back to show that demo. But the final little piece of uh, technology is mobile, uh, you know, being mobile friendly. So with the same application stack and tools, uh, we can basically target iPhone. Um, it you know, works, has great JavaScript engine and uh, most of the stuff you need uh, to get the job done. So you know, why not uh, you know, try to make it hit that too? Uh, so I don't know if any of you guys pulled this up on your iPhone, but it works for the most part. Um, you can see I'm basically using a media query for the, the width and moving things around a little bit. And the other thing you can do um, that I'm only using for the visualization, honestly, is a JavaScript condition. Uh, if you're on the iPhone. So for instance, you may not want to load as much data from the server. 
so just let me show you real quick the, uh, let's see if we got the uh, visualization demo. Um, So uh, to show you the iPhone-friendly version, so it, by the way, the, the UI, there's a lot that could be done here, and I hope you guys might be inspired to go like tinker with it, um, because you know, it basically left a lot of things kind of where I uh, ended up with them. But uh, the view is kind of a composite of these four tabs, uh, but you can break, you know, drop into each one, and it will just show that one component. So. When you click on the, the home link, it's kind of a lot if you don't realize what the different four components are. Um, not great design. But uh, if you want to look at how it works on the iPhone, if you shrink your width down um, just past uh, 750 or whatever I have it at, uh, you get basically what you're going to get on the iPhone. So now the home page is a menu, and then you have each of those pages separately. Uh, you know, and you can do more with them, like um, turning off your hovers. Um, and things like that is pretty much all it takes, but you know, it's great to be able to have the same application and be able to chat and interact and do all the same stuff from your iPhone. Um, yeah, I did, I did put in a, uh, you know, uh, yeah, got, made sure that didn't work, but uh, thanks for checking. <laughs> um, and, you know, and also I did like, you know, guests are allowed and stuff like that for now, but you can also uh, just click on your avatar and upload a, a photo and stuff like that works pretty quick and easy just for fun demonstration. Uh, so, I mean, that's about it uh, for the, the whole app. A uh, few things about where you could go from here. Uh, I didn't use any URLs or routing from Backbone here, but you know, if you wanted to have like a URL for each chat room and stuff like that, you could. Uh, I just really didn't need it for this. Uh, web workers, I started trying to look at. Um, if you are playing the audio in the background, it's running through JavaScript, and so doing things with the UI can actually interrupt the audio, so that's a big pain point uh, to try to fix. I was hoping I could quickly <laughs> or somehow solve it with web workers, but I'm not sure it'll be that straightforward because they can't edit the DOM uh, directly, I guess, so uh, a little bit more in, uh, work has to go into that. Uh, otherwise, I've got a big list of things that I would love to do to the application. Um, you know, just cool feature ideas. Uh, you know, if anything, I hope you guys are inspired by this kind of application and what you can do on the web, uh, how easy it is actually to take uh, real-time components and, uh, you know, HTML5 features and kind of develop real quickly and easily for uh, the target experience you're trying to achieve. Uh, when you're not worrying about IE and some things like that, it makes it a lot easier, obviously. But, uh, you know, I think it's a lot of fun. Uh, so it's kind of something that I just worked on as a, a passion project that I use all the time. Um, me and my friends are sitting in a chat room listening to music and working all day. Uh, you know, and I know a lot of people do that. Um, so, you know, hopefully uh, if you guys are interested in this sort of thing, uh, please, you know, uh, follow up on it and let me know. Uh, you can follow me on, uh, on Twitter and on uh, my GitHub account would be the best place to find me. Uh, you can follow those, uh, uh, follow those projects, House.js and uh, Jukebox.js. So uh, that's pretty much all I got. Yeah, anyone got questions? Thought of um, porting this to Spotify? No, I haven't yet. Um, this kind of came, you know, the, the use case was very much like uh, my own music collection. Uh, but the more I'm going down the road and using it, obviously I'd love to pull things in like YouTube, um, other APIs, Spotify, RD, you know, whatever's out there. Um, I couldn't load in remote files using Aurora. Um, the, the files have to be on your domain uh, or off your local machine because uh, it's using Ajax to load them, actually, so uh, it doesn't handle it unless you have cores, uh, cross-domain setup. Uh, I would love to do more integration with other services. You know, clearly there's a whole world of music online already um, that I haven't really tapped into, but, uh, you know, I think this is kind of a platform to, to start that kind of uh, experimentation. Yeah, just so you know, you can build apps within their environment now. Okay. And the win that you'll get is it's HTML5 based, so you don't have to worry about cross-browser problems, mm -hmm. and, uh, and then you just have a billion songs to use to kind of then work on the chat or whatever you're working on. So. 
Okay, cool. And then also you don't have to worry about being sued. So. <laughs> sure, sure. Uh, yeah, that would be nice. Um, that is definitely a, a great thing. I haven't looked at the, that API that in depth um, too much, but uh, I'm sure I need to uh, explore that more. Anyone else? Were you forced to use XHR because you have to use a WebKit audio context to play the song? Um, yeah, Aurora uses that by default. Um, you know, so the downside is you can't get cross-domain with it, I guess. But I actually found it to be pretty nice. Um, one thing, uh, I, I've actually had alpha versions kind of this before and played with it. Um, the cool thing about having my audio files, my multimedia in Mongo, uh, GridFS, is you can kind of stream it and pull it out in fun ways with Node. Uh, and one of the things that the, the, the um, XHR does, um, specifically, I think Aurora is doing it manually, is they're downloading the file one megabyte at a time, uh, which is really great. Uh, obviously, it'll play on your mobile phone, even over AT&T sometimes. And, uh, you know, just in general streaming files, it makes it more suitable. Um, Aurora can handle great things like FLAC files, you know, so people that actually care about their music um, might have music and format, you know, quality formats. Uh, and those are huge files, right? Like 30 meg a song or something like that. Uh, yeah, um, so you know it's nice for those to be able to stream in, um, you know, in chunks and rather than the whole file at one time. Uh, and that was actually a specific challenge I had, kind of building some of those, is getting the HTTP 206 request partial files. Um, I, you know, because I'm doing it in Node, I basically had to write that myself, uh, which was kind of fun. You can use Wave if you need a huge file format that works better. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, right. <laughs> So, well, first, why wouldn't just an audio tag work and you can use it cross domain? Uh, yeah. What's that? Um, I don't know about that. Maybe it would be okay. Um, part of it is I'm synchronizing this among all the clients. So, uh, you know, if we're in here for more than a few minutes, uh, when the next song kicks on, the server is sending a socket message to everyone in the chat room saying, uh, get ready, preload this song. And that gives it a 20-second buffer or something. Uh, everyone starts downloading the song, preloading it, and then at one moment I say play. Uh, I guess I could do that with the audio element too, but like I said, the, I mean, this is all an experimentation, but the thing I liked about Aurora is that for those browsers that do support audio API, it will support the codecs I support. Um, so it's guaranteed across the board. Um, and with the audio element, it's like I'd have to basically transcode every file uploaded into two or three different formats, I think, like OGG. And, you know, a few of the others, just depending on how I could hit every browser. Um, so for the time being, this felt like an easier solution. Now, what version of iOS is this supposed to be working on? Um, well, it'll work in Safari. Everything but the audio will work. Uh, it should. Uh, the audio, yeah, the audio um, is coming in iOS 6. Uh, I actually have it running on my phone, um, and that's a fun demo I can show you, too. Uh, I think, from what I've found, you do have to add it to the home screen, though. Um, you know, like bookmarking the app to get the audio to play. But uh, I, I mean, that, that's really the only thing that doesn't work here, and that's where falling back to an audio element would actually make sense, maybe, because that does work on the iPhone. But uh, maybe they like Chrome for the iPhone. I've never tried it. Oh yeah, I didn't even try that. Um, that would be interesting. In the back. I think it's sound manager. Oh, sorry, what's it? Sound manager. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I didn't look at that too much. That's actually what Dancer will fall back into as well. Um, Dancer does audio playback, which I thought was kind of outside of its scope, honestly. But uh, it does use uh, the sound manager. I haven't used it a lot. I mean, honestly, if, for, for my experimentation, I don't want to do anything Flash, anything IE. Uh, just <laughs> OK, yeah. Um, yeah, so I mean, that's cool. Um, I, I could probably look at that again or maybe just try swapping it in like as an adapter or something. Uh, maybe it's better, um, probably more hardened. This is very, very bleeding edge. Like they're basically, if uh, you go look at the Aurora website, they're like, oh man, this is so cool. We just released a MP3 decoder in JavaScript, you know, and now there's like people rolling out with, uh, you know, all the different codecs. Um, so it's very, very bleeding edge and may not be the best uh, for production, but it's kind of a fun experiment. Anybody else? Thank you, guys.